the real, it's the next episode. Hello, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, I'm gonna give you a progress report of how far I've got through to this mountain. Also share with you what I've learned about what it takes to open these battery packs up and just get the batteries ready for testing. To say that it's time consuming is slightly of an understatement, uh, but hopefully with what I've learned and what I can share with you in the knowledge, uh, you'll be better prepared uh, with what tools you'll need and what processes you need to have at hand prior to getting these battery packs cracked open. Okay, so when preparing to open up the batteries with anything, the first thing you need to think about is safety. So gloves is vital, safety glasses, and in case when things go bad, definitely a box of plasters. There will be blood. The next thing to organize is a way of storing those batteries. I think it's very important that you have a means of storing your cells that you freed, be it whatever size you want. You can even get cardboard boxes. Even a, a cardboard box like that is fine. It's just something that is gonna allow you to store the batteries once you've freed them. You've got your batteries. Uh, doesn't matter what quantity of batteries you've got, but they will come in an assortment of sizes. As you've seen in my previous videos, I've got quite a few that were very similar, so I was very fortunate to put those into those groups that are similar. So if you do find batteries that are similar size, then I would suggest you arrange them um, into those sizes. And the sizes could also mean if a cell has six, nine, four, whatever it is that they have, put those into those groups as well. Uh, and I tend to be quite anal with this sort of stuff. I tend to do them in what looks the same, what's the same brand, uh, just to keep the batteries in the same box. Right, so you've got yourself a battery pack. Most of them, probably all of them, are gonna be sonically welded. And this is the process of putting two pieces of plastic together, vibrating it to the point where the two mating surfaces creates friction and then the plastic melts together, fusing both um, both cases together. But predominantly there'll be a split line and you should be able to remove that apart. You would need something to poke through the shell. So typically you would enter from the power supply socket here. There is no other easier way to do this, unfortunately, if you're doing it manually, other than the power supply socket. And anything you use, if it's a screwdriver with a small head, flat screwdriver, even a spike, you've got to be very careful with short circuiting it. Again, safety gloves first. You can see mine has been well used because mine has worn out. If you put your spike in there, I would not go above, but go below and try to open up the split line. That's all you're doing is trying to open up the split line. You just want to twist it in there. Now the most dangerous thing about this is when you're pushing the screwdriver in, you could quite easily slip and stab yourself in the hand. And oh boy, have I done that quite a few times. So you just got to be very careful how much effort you put in there and just use a twisting action. Twist the screwdriver so that you're prying it open like that. Once you've freed yourself one area of the split line, you can see here, 
you can actually work your way through the rest of it and it should start coming away. Right, so I've managed to get through one side of it. So there's two things you can do now. You can either use your fingers and rip it open, or you can bring in a monkey wrench, is what I like to use, because you go and get a good twist on it. That's what's so good about this monkey wrench, is you can grab something, twist it, and rip it open like that. So really, it, you're, using, you're using leverage to pry it open. Now you should be able to take out these batteries. So most of the batteries I've noticed are going to be somehow glued to the case. So they would use either double-sided tape or they would use some form of silicon. So in this case we've got black silicon there that is used to secure the battery to the case. If it's double-sided tape it's great, you just peel it off carefully, but it is a nuisance. That's probably the worst type of battery to have. And if it's silicon, that's not a problem. Lucky for me, this one is silicon on the actual tape itself. So that's going to be very straightforward. Once you get past the case, you present it with the batteries. The next thing to get is yourself is a couple of cutters. So I've got a flat head cutter here and I've got a standard wire cutter. And when you first decide to cut these, the best thing to do is you, you have to be very careful how you go about removing the wiring. And I would disconnect the connections on the end. You're basically disarming the battery and so on. So most of these will be in a 3S 2P configuration if they're a six cell battery. You want to isolate the negative first and then it's a case of just ripping these off. There's your electronics, the plastic. Okay, so now you'll be presented with the pairs of batteries that you have here. Now you could do what Paul Kennett has done and keep these pairs like this uh, because um, he is right in saying that they would have been paired from the factory like this and so therefore they would stay balanced form uh, throughout their life. So if these test good you can actually keep the patch like this and run with it. I on the other hand prefer to make it hard for myself and go check these batteries individually because I really want to create packs that are well balanced when I create my power wall. So if you decide that you want to separate the batteries most if not all of the batteries will have been spot welded using nickel strips and this is the single most wonderful tool that you can use for removing the nickel strips. It, it does the job absolutely perfectly. I would start from one end here, pry it open. You don't want to pull it, you want to lever it out. You'll be left with small nibs that you can actually peel off. Right, on some of the batteries you'll get silicon that the manufacturers will use to secure the batteries together as well as to the case. And this can be a fairly fiddly to get off. And what I tend to use is I use an old blunt knife um, and carefully scrape this off, which works quite well. So there you have it. These are the parts that make up this battery pack. The cells are what's been freed and these should be thrown away for it to be recycled tomorrow. At times you get a battery that you've damaged the skin quite badly and on this one we've perforated the skin. This one I think would be still okay but you can get somewhere that you've actually peeled the silicon off and it's basically taken the whole sleeve off. So for that you should have some sleeves at hand where you can cut these to size. Either you can buy in a roll like this or you can buy them pre-cut. Um, they're inexpensive but it certainly will prevent you from shorting out those batteries. And if you're going to use that then obviously you'll need a hot air gun uh, such as this. Again very inexpensive but it will just 
make sure that you're being safe as you take these batteries apart. Um, if you've got a preferred method of opening up your battery packs, then feel free to write them in the comments. Those who are watching this episode, read all the comments. There's some really good stuff in there that people do share and uh, a lot of it can get missed. And a lot of, a lot of your queries may have been already answered in, in those comments. So my workflow for removing these batteries is rather procedural. I tend to do each of the stages that are involved in freeing those batteries. So shelling the cases is one process. So what I would do is I would organize all my batteries into one model number. And then what I would do is I would shell all of those batteries in that model number and keep them all separate in separate trays like this one. And then at this stage, we've basically got just a sticky film to remove glue and nickel strips. The reason I prefer to do it that way is because if we tackled every process per battery, what would happen is that you would get a waste of time where you're having to change between tools. Either it's a screwdriver, pry it open, crack it open, put the screwdriver down, pick up a wire cutter, cut it from the shell, put that down, pick up the knife, scrape off the glue, and then finally nip off the nibs from any nickel from another flat cutter like this one. Now that process of actually changing tools actually takes a long time. If you calculate each process of having to put the tool down, pick the tool up, for one battery it could take 10 or 15 seconds, and over a thousand that would be a waste of time. So having one tool in your hand, being able to pry open a battery and removing that single phase, weird or not, actually is quicker. So that's how I tend to work. I tend to work procedurally rather than do a one workflow per unit. So once I've done the shelling of my laptops, I'll have trays and trays of batteries in this order like this. And for me, now the next process just really involves a flat cutter and it doesn't even need the knife. Um, so I will remove the sticky, the nickel strip, and then put that in the tray upright, ready for it to be processed. If it does have glue, then I will put that in a row, laying flat down, build up the pile, and then move on to the knife and do the whole lot in one go. This white box here is mainly if I have a battery that has a damaged jacket, then I will put that here ready for it to be re-sleeved. And again, that's a separate process that I can do once this box is full or I finished a whole tray and decide to just remove that box as well. Right, to give an indication of how long this takes, I'm gonna set up my GoPro, put it in time lapse mode. I've got a funky new clock which my kids have been working on. They hope to do a project on that at some point and that will capture the time it takes for me to process this whole tray and that's just for you guys to understand how long the process takes for me to go through a whole tray of batteries and then when you come to doing your batteries you'll kind of know what you need to do and what time you need to set aside to get this done.
Well, we're quickly approaching the end of this episode and you're probably asking, we haven't seen all the batteries in one lump sum. Well, this next sequence, I've taken the time to present it in a manner that I hope all of you appreciate. Do you remember this area? In my first video on this channel, this is where the mountain was. It was yay high and it was all the way back here, where there's an empty space now, and all the way to that point there. Double, tri double triple stack, the batteries are falling over themselves. And the in the Tetra sequence, what you saw there was 4,878 batteries. In total, I have processed 5,800 and 30 cells. The Tetra sequence took about three weeks, mainly thanks to the laser cutter, it really helped uh, open up the packs very quick. And again, um, these are organized in model groups. So I'll run them through my laser cutter and they'll open up very easily. This box here is a random one. I'll have to put some elbow grease into this one, unfortunately, but it shouldn't take too long. And here we have about 900 cells. We shouldn't take any time at all. So on the final reveal, when I have all the batteries freed in their entirety, we should have well over 6,000 cells and they'll all need to be charged, discharged, recharged, checked for internal resistance and then put into their capacity groups. So if there's any time to finish Project JU, now is that time. Oh, on an ending note, I just wanted to thank all of the people that have subscribed to this channel and supported it and it really helps boost the channel. Uh, I never expected that I would ever get past a thousand and I think we're already approaching 1500 subscribers and it's beyond my comprehension that I would ever get to this stage. So again, thank you very much. I do try to keep the videos coming regularly, but it's very difficult with the, the lifestyle I have. Uh, I've got four very young children that are very demanding and also a, a busy work life as well. But this whole process is extremely enjoyable for me. I, I love what I do. I love to share what I do and I hope that uh, you guys can stick with me and learn with me. I must also mention that uh, Pete up at HB Powerwall has got a brilliant forum going, uh, DIY Powerwall. I'll link it into this video as well as in the description. I implore anyone that's interested in 18650s or creating Powerwalls, that is the forum to go to. It does everything you need to. Everybody that contributes to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter are all herding up there. Uh, including myself and uh, if anybody's got any queries or any information that is definitely the place to be. I hope to see you guys up there. Feel free to like, share, comment and subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you next time. Take care.